Still don't get the music file. It's one of those things. Okay, everybody, hello. Welcome back to the photo moment of photo Joseph of show, of YouTube, of weekday, of whatever. It's commentary time. Let's talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. Let's see what's happening in here. And things are buzzing. Things are vibrating. We were just finished talking about this. This is a beautiful combination. You want to check that out. Go watch the previous show, which was the actual live show. Now we're just going to go in the commentary and see who wants to talk about what. I was such a fumbling, bumbling. The music played? Kevin says the music played? How did I not hear the music? It didn't play. Kevin, you're just messing with me. Why are you messing with me? It played in your head. You've heard it so many times that it played in your head. There you go. OC2 Fish07, hopefully you're not a fisher, says that he loves my videos. Why, thank you. Look, we can, look, I'll prove it. He says so right there. He loves my videos. I'm always so animated. Animated, I am. Seriously, people are saying, oh, the end screen video. Yeah, the music plays on the end screen, but not the opening music. Those are two different systems. That's why. Okay. Um, oh, okay, here's a good question. Marvin says, not quite understand, this is great. Someone just asked me this in the comments uh, on one of the videos that I answered this morning. It says, not quite understanding the Luminar versus Affinity Photo. Do I really need both or just one of them? Okay, very different apps. Obviously, both are photo editing, photo manipulation, photo image enhancement, et cetera, et cetera, apps. Here's how I described it to, to whoever it was who had asked in the comments. Affinity Photo is more like Photoshop. If you need text, if you need layout control, if you need object, create objects, create shapes, that sort of thing, then, then Affinity Photo, no question, because Luminar doesn't do that. So Affinity Photo gives you a more Photoshop-like experience. Uh, and it really, I mean, it's, obviously there's things you can do in Photoshop you can't do in uh, Affinity Photo, but man, there's a lot you can do in Affinity Photo. So it is big, it's powerful, it's robust, it's got a ton of features, but it's not the easiest thing in the world to use. Like Photoshop, it's got so much to it that it can take a while to figure things out. There's actually part of the workflow that I'm still trying to wrap my head around that I just kind of had to stumble upon and I went, wait a second, oh, that and that, and so I'm still, it's, there's definitely some of those still in there. Luminar, on the other hand, is just about image enhancement, right? You've got a photo, you wanna make that photo more better. That's what Luminar is, uh, that's what, um, yeah, Luminar is all about. It's really easy to use. It's very, very, uh, it's a very nice workflow. You can create your own kind of workspaces. That's actually what they're called, is workspaces. That, for sp particular types of work, like, oh, when I do landscape work, I just, I use these five adjustments or filters, whatever they're called. Um, so I'm gonna load up a landscape set and do that. Very nice and very simple in that way, very clean. Totally separate things. Can you do everything that you can do in Luminar over in Affinity Photo? Yes. I think so, not as easily, and some things that you can do in Luminar that are kind of one-click presets or some things like the Orton effect, which I really, really like. That's something that is not built in natively into photo. You can do it, you just have to know how to do it. So again, it's more like Photoshop. It just doesn't have those one-click button presets. It has some, obviously, but it's not all about the one-clicks. Whereas Luminar is largely about the one-click one-click, the, the simple fix adjustment brick tool, whatever, that allows you to make that type of change very quickly and easily. So if you want quick and easy with phenomenal results, go for Luminar. If you want much more advanced, you're going to spend more time working, but you can do more, then go with Affinity Photo. If you like the idea of being able to choose back and forth between the two, <laughs> then get both. That's the beauty of it. If you are going to buy either of those, then I please encourage you to visit my website, photoapps.expert, which I will bring up right here. Photo apps, and I'll bring up right photoapps.expert. Let's get this full screen. Where, let me show you how to do this nice and easy like. So this is the front page of photoapps.expert. If you're looking for any particular app, you can obviously just look and you'll see this is all the latest posts. But you go up here at the top where it says app and you pull that down and these are all the apps that we've talked about, which still blows me away when I look at this list. And you go um, Affinity, where's Affinity Photo? Uh, probably under F, there we go, Affinity Photo. We choose that, and as soon as you choose it, it loads up all the content around Affinity Photo, both for macOS and iOS. And there's nice little buttons at the top that says, check out Affinity Photo for macOS or for iOS in the App Store. And that will take you there, and that's an affiliate link, so I would appreciate you using that. So uh, yeah, that's, that's how that works. There, there's my separation of the two. I hope that helps and doesn't further confuse. I have training on both of them. So if you're a member of photoapps.expert, you can access all of the live training that I've done on both of those apps, of which let's see what there is. So there's a lot on Affinity, as you can clearly see here. And if we go to MacFun uh, Luminar, you can see there's a lot on Luminar as well. So I've done quite a few courses on both of these, including a podcast on both of them. So.
lots of content to look at in there. Lots of digging, lots of, uh, lots of, lots of fun. And incidentally, I'll go back to this real quick. Incidentally, if you are looking at Luminar, it is on sale for $49 until July 27th, which is, that's today, ooh, that's today. It has, yeah, it looks like they're, they're fudging it a little bit. Looks like you still have another 24 hours. It's probably the end of today somewhere in the world. I don't know, anyway. Uh, there's your countdown right there. So if you're interested in getting it, obviously you haven't yet get it now at 49 bucks. That's a pretty darn good deal. So check that out. Uh, Marvin says, enjoying your photo apps and videos on Affinity. Excellent, thank you very much. There's a free beta of Luminar for Windows. Yes, there is, that is correct. If you are a Windows user and you would like to download the free beta of Luminar for Windows, you may go to, go to macfun.com, you'll find it. I'm sure it's linked right on the front page. Uh, Trevor says, Luminar seems more like a finishing app. Um, I don't know. I mean, you can absolutely do all your edits in there you know, from your, your, well, it doesn't have retouching. So I would say it's not even finishing. I would say it would get you most of your way if you don't have to do retouching, but as far as your image enhancement, coloring, that sort of thing goes, and then bring it back into Lightroom, whatever your asset manager is, and do final little bits of retouching, that sort of thing. Um, that might be worth considering. I don't think Luminar has retouching. Maybe it does. It does have a clone tool. Maybe it does have retouching. I, I do too many of these things. I'll have to look. I can't remember. Um, red, f yeah, anyway, uh, somebody needs to be dropped out. Um, Right, and let's see here. What else is going on in the chat? Um, Joel Capes has a request for Panasonic. He says, can you please ask Panasonic to make lenses that have repeatable manual focus? So you, what you're talking about is, is mechanical focus. Uh, all the Panasonic lenses have, it's, it's a drive-by wire system. So zoom is mechanical, right? That's 35, that's 100. It's always the same position. The focus is a drive-by wire system where this ring spins smoothly forever and ever. It is not a single position. And what that means is that if you spin it really fast, it focuses fast. If you spin it more slowly, it focuses more slowly. Other than the obvious, there's acceleration curves built into it. It takes getting used to. This is true. It does absolutely take a little getting used to. And yes, it's fair to say that there are certain focus maneuvers that would be harder, if maybe not even possible to get consistently accurate with this type of a system versus a fully mechanical focusing system. If you're a filmmaker and you need that totally predictable focus A to focus B and you want to do that manually, then yeah, you might want to look at cinema lenses or other manufacturer lenses that are not, um, that don't have that drive-by wire system. But on the other hand, if you're shooting with a GH5, you know, and you've got focus A, B, and C, you do have that focus point control you can program in. Here's point A, point B, and point C, but I totally get. If you want mechanical manual control over that, then, then these lenses may not really do that for you. Advantages and disadvantages to everything, but that is, I believe all Lumix lenses are like that. I could be wrong, but I think all Lumix lenses are like, are like that. So. So there you go. Um, let's see here. Anything else? Uh, but Joel, thank you for the feedback. It's, it's good information for Panasonic to hear, no doubt. Um, but I don't see that changing. I really don't because it's just it's a you know it's another market segment. Mm -hmm. Anything else in the comments? Let's see. Going back down to the bottom. Dave Dell Studio says I'm trying to decide which microphone for my GH5. Looking for something reasonably small for travel. Did use some Ryko Micro Windjammer on the internal mics, that, which worked quite well. Yeah, don't use the internal mics. Don't use the internal mics. I mean that's just. You know, it's it's good for syncing. Um, so the mic that I use, I've shown it before. It's not in here. Um, Ryan, can you grab it? It's it's. I think it's just in the bag. I think it's just sitting out there. Uh, the Shure VP83. You may recall that I did a big old microphone test a while ago. Um, we'll link to that up here. Did a huge microphone comparison. Huge. I mean, I compared a bunch of Rode mics and the Shure and I don't remember now some other ones. Um, I chose the, the Shure, which Ryan and Ryan's trying to find right now. I chose the Shure, which I really, really liked. I don't think it was necessarily better or worse sounding than the Rode, whichever the Rode was, whichever model I used, you'll have to watch the video to see it. Uh, part of the reason I chose it, it, it has a slightly different sound, but again, not better or worse, it's just a bit different. But I like the profile of it. Sorry, it's not obvious, what, which microphone? Uh, oh, the one that's usually on top of my GH5. It's in the bag, the, my, the bag that I took to LA. It's probably on the ch uh, couch. Yeah, um, 
the profile of it, the shape of it, the profile when I'm carrying the camera at my side, it's thinner, it's a little taller, a little thinner. I just, I really like the shape of it. And so that's the one that I stuck with. So um, it's been great. This is kind of cool. Uh, if Ryan can find it, I'll show it to you. Uh, Neil says, after watching your vlog photo moment or vlog photo moment, I don't know which one that was, probably vlog photo moment, I noticed you shoot with it differently. I tend to judge the vlog shot based on the history. I'm slightly overexposed. No, no, that's, you're, you're right. You're, yeah, slightly overexposed. You can base it off the histogram, but I would advise basing it off of the scopes because the scopes are going to be more accurate in that sense and, and allow you to see if something's clipping, allow you to see what. That's the nice thing about scopes is that you're seeing, waveform, sorry, the waveform monitor, scopes. The one that goes this way. Um, the nice thing about that is, let me, uh, can we turn this back on? Let me see, is that still, it is still running. Let's do this and do that. And, oh, but they don't show on the out. Sorry, I forgot that those don't show on the out, but you can't see it here. It's a tiny, oh, we definitely can't see it because the thing's in the way. Um, across there, you get a little bit more information that left to right, it shows you if you've got a peak somewhere. I don't know how much of this you'll be able to see in the, Probably not. But if you have a peak on the left-hand side or something, it'll show you what's peaking. You can see better. You can see more accurately what's happening in there. And no, I forget it. He can't find the microphone. Don't worry about it. Um, so that's how I would shoot using the waveform. It's a bit more accurate, I do believe. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, but no, I don't think you're doing it wrong. If you're using the histogram, shooting slightly overexposed, you're not doing it wrong. Also look at using the, um, the zebra striping. Was it... Go to leeminglut.com, L-E-E-M-I-N-G, leeminglut.com. They have an article on there about shooting for vlog using the, uh, using the zebra striping and kind of where to set it and how to expose and so on. It's a very interesting read. Definitely check that out. Okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Neil says, you may have covered this in the GH5 training, which I bought, thank you, and I'm waiting for the complete bunch until... Oh, you're talking about the, yeah, I do. Actually, I do have a whole section on vlog in that, so you will definitely enjoy that. Um, oc 2 fish 7 says, is Sure the same company that used to make hi-fi cartridges? They were stunning hi-fi cartridges. I don't know. Sure has been around for a long time making great headphones and great microphones, so they make a very good quality product. Um, let me show, I'll just pull it up up here since we can't find it, and we will, of course, link to this below um, once the show is over. But let me see here, Sure VP83, that's the one that I want. It is the Lens Hopper. This is the one that I got right here. They're, they have a couple different models of this, uh, so that's the main one, right? It's, it's fantastic. You can get it with the Windjammer, which I highly recommend. So that's the Dead Cat. Where's, where's, there we go. Oh, that graphic won't stay up, so I'll just have to leave it. Can I do that? Um, no. Why is this so big? Anyway, I'll just have to leave it off on the, I can't point to it, but. If I do that, you can see the little windsock there. I highly recommend that, and I never take it off. It just lives on there. There's no reason to ever take it off. And then there is a another version of this. Let me back up and see if I can find it, um, which includes a built-in recorder, which is really cool, and is a backup. Here we go. This is the one. So it's a little bit larger. I have not tested this one. And this has built-in recording, so it still records to your camera. So you plug it into the camera, see it still has the audio line out, so you can still record to the camera, but it simultaneously will record onto a memory card in here. And I have said I don't really get the point of that because I've never had, in my mind, if you lose video, you're, if you lose video, if you lose video, you're losing audio, you're losing the whole thing, it doesn't matter if you have a backup of the audio, if you don't have the video. But I've had people say, no, no, that's, they, this is a good idea, and I, now I get it. If you have your audio recorded separately, and there is a mess up in the video, a glitch, uh, whatever, you run out of memory, right? you, you're not paying attention, you run out of uh, space in your memory card, the microphone will still record, you can swap cards, and then during that segment of the interview or whatever, you can cut to B-roll, cut to something else. So I can totally see the advantage of that. If you're doing really serious work and you wanna have that backup, I think there's an advantage to that. I don't know if on this thing, because I haven't used it, if it does any kind of automatic recording, probably not. You're probably hitting record on this separately, meaning that you've got to start and stop recording on two separate devices at once. Um, or maybe you just leave it recording all the time. I don't know. Um, but you know, it's worth checking out. It, that's another option there. But I do really, really like the sound out of that microphone. Let's see what the price difference is. This one with the recorder is $299. The one without the VP83 that I have is $199, so it's another 100 bucks, so 50% more, so it's not ins insignificant. It's definitely a, a jump to get to that next uh, mic, but if you need it, 
you need it. And a hundred dollars, if you just think of the difference, a hundred bucks for a recorder is cheap. So I think that's a, it's a pretty good option. All righty. <sighs> Marvin says, sure, been going on for like forever. They were always good kit. Yeah, they really were. They really were. Um, John says, you obviously never had the audio cable fall out during recording and not notice. That is true. I have not had the audio cable fall out during recording and not notice. That'd be a pretty neat trick. Um, it'd be hard for it to just fall out. But I can see where you're going with this. See? Look at that. All kinds of advantages to having a separate audio recording. Excellent. Alrighty. I think that's it. I think we're good on there. Nothing else in the comments? Nothing else you guys want to talk about today? Thanks for sticking around through the complete bumble jumble that was this morning's recording. Um, that was not uh, that was not a good start to the day, but we're getting there. We, you know, there's always a new challenge. Hey, everybody, tomorrow is Friday, which means it's Mevo Friday. <laughs> Love calling it Mevo Friday, which means I'm going to be out in the field. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be out somewhere shooting something, hanging out somewhere. It might be drone related because... I'm having fun with that little thing. Hey, yesterday's update uh, to the Spark added the 180 degree panorama. And it, I don't know if it's really 180 degree. I don't really quite buy that, honestly. I'm gonna have to look at this a little bit more quickly. I'm going a little more closely. I'm like, is that really 180 degrees? But what it does is it shoots nine pictures in a grid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'll tell you right now, we'll do a whole show about this, but I'm gonna give you a little hint in case you're watching this and you, are, you got that update and you're going, how's this work? If you go into the app, and you pull up the picture, it will show stitching. It'll show stitching, you go, okay, stitching, and then you see it, okay, cool, and you hit download, and it downloads a tiny microscopic picture. It's like 2048 wide. Considering it shot nine photos, it should be a bit bigger than that. But if you then take that memory card into your computer, into your iPad, whatever, and download the original files, you get the full size, and then you can stitch them together. And I posted on Instagram yesterday, which I realize is only this big, but I posted on Instagram yesterday a stitch from the Spark that showed, and I, I brought those original files into um, Affinity Photo on the iPad and used the panorama feature, and it stitched. I didn't know if it was going to do it because it's not all in one row. It figured it out. It put them all in the right order, put it together beautiful. So that you can get a sneak preview of on my Instagram feed, Photo Joseph, obviously for Instagram. Please do click follow if you're not already there. And uh, you can get a preview of that. And then next week, I'm doing a show on Affinity Photo Panorama. Panorama, Panorama pa which one is it? I'm doing a show on that and I will use that as a demo file along with some others. And uh, maybe I'll shoot some more tomorrow while I'm out and about having some fun. Okay. Let's get out of here. I got work to do. Take care of yourselves, everybody. Have yourselves a lovely rest of your Thursday, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.